an investment advisor approaches you with a proposal to invest a huge sum of money annually into a concept or product based on the following information. One, it only contains two or three percent of everything you need. It will come in the wrong form, cause problems, but it will work to some degree. It will require additional investments in other products due to its use. It will cause greater and greater management costs and problems. Toxins accumulation will increase year after year. In time, it will be the world's greatest toxicity source. And in time, it will eventually destroy your greatest asset, your health, your land, your wealth, and your legacy. This is NPK synthetic-based chemical agriculture that we have developed over the last 110 years. NPK and agricultural chemicals are the equivalent of a cancer in your soil. Let's look at some of the agricultural and food industries as being major contributors to the escalating degenerative diseases in the U.S. today. 1910 was when we had our first chemical synthetic nitrogen. By 1924, NPK concept had been established in schools. We began using pesticides in 1930. DDT was introduced in 1940. We had progressed with our tillage to where in the mid 40s, it was very common. DDT was finally restricted in 1972. Roundup, commercialized by Monsanto, came on the market in 1974. Genetic engineering hit in 1996 and moved forward. And so you look at the rate of genetically engineered crops that exists now in our agricultural systems. When we go back and we look at degenerative diseases and we look at what changed in our food systems, you will notice that as we switched from natural saturated fats into seed oils, which began in about 1865, 1866. Then we invented Crisco. And then we went from complex and whole food type carbohydrates into refined carbohydrates. And we began to replace our natural saturated fats with seed oils. We replaced our whole foods with processed foods. And so we had our first documented heart attack in the United States in 1912. We began introducing margarine instead of butter and lard. Our food processing began in the mid 1940s. High fructose corn syrup came in about 1957. There was a big push in the 60s and 70s to go to a low fat diet and any type of natural saturated fat was demonized. McGovern went through on regulatory things to put food into the school lunch programs. The U.S. Dietary Guidelines came out, which were to go into seed oils, vegetable oils, processed type oils instead of saturated fats. Those were all demonized. The cholesterol boogeyman came out of the closet. By 2010, 63% of the U.S. diet was processed food, which is heavily, heavily influenced by refined carbohydrates and vegetable oils. And you look at the degenerative diseases that have come from this. Our soil degradation synthetic fertilizers, K2, 
chemical toxicity and genetic engineering. So this is when we begin to implement these agricultural changes and practices. We went from a natural biological system into a synthetic fertilizer, heavily supported by chemical toxicity and genetic engineering. 99% of our sugar beets are genetically engineered, 98% of our rice, 96% of our cotton, 95% of canola we produce is genetically engineered, 95% of the soybeans, 93% of the corn, and up to 30% of the alfalfa. Soil and food production are inseparably connected. That which kills soil biology reduces CO2 production. It reduces yields, it lowers food quality, and eventually destroys the soil's health and its productivity. Salt and acid-based fertilizers, along with toxic agricultural chemicals like pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, insecticides, have for nearly a hundred years been the overwhelming factors causing extensive soil and microorganism damage with the environmental pollutions that contribute to the escalation of degenerative diseases among mankind everywhere. Roundup, glyphosate, is likely the most toxic and pernicious chemical in use today in agricultural and food production. There are three patents on Roundup, two of them as mineral chelators and the latest in 2010 as a potent antibiotic. This is very destructive to beneficial soil microorganisms and beneficial human microflora. Glyphosate interferes with metabolism. Active mineral chelator. It disrupts the enzyme processes by removing the activators. Glyphosate is negatively charged. Trace elements are typically positively charged, so they bind to each other, and this removes the trace element from activating enzymes. It disrupts the processes and produces incomplete compounds. When these enzymes cannot fully function, they do not produce complete compounds. It interferes with glycine, resulting in incomplete compounds like peptides, proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids or fats. And this attracts pathogens to the plant, causing disease in animal and mankind. Glyphosate kills lactobacillus, bifidobacteria, and enterococcal species. Glyphosate is ineffective against species like Salmonella, Clostridium perfringens, and Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium botulinum is found increased in kids with autistic spectrum disorders. In other words, Glyphosate disrupts the composition of our microbiome by selectively eradicating or reducing beneficial microbes while selecting for unhealthy species. It does this in our gut. It does exactly the same thing in the soil. So what are we talking about with metabolic disease? These didn't exist 120 years ago. So you start looking down the list there is a massive, massive increase in these metabolic diseases that have come from our agricultural and our food system changes. Basically going from natural systems that are biological based into chemical systems that are fertilizer based. Nearly 90% of adults in America are metabolically unhealthy. Actually, it's over 90%. It's 93.4 or 93.6%. You can find five to six out of 100 people that are metabolically healthy today. 60% of Americans have at least one chronic disease. This is a 700% increase since 1935 and 40% of Americans have multiple chronic diseases. The human disease timeline. When you go back on human history, there is 
has been very little to no metabolic disease. In a biblical sense, you go back almost 6,000 years, and we don't have a history of these kind of diseases. But in the last 100 years, we have escalated the disease in the human population to these types of unimaginable levels. At the rate we are going, this is a path to extinction. Of the U.S. population, we can go back and we can start looking at the changes in our agricultural systems and in our food systems. And you can track how metabolically unhealthy we are. We have approximately 336 million people in America. Over 300 are metabolically unhealthy. 73% of our population, or 244 million, are overweight. At least 200 million have one metabolic syndrome. 50% of our population, almost 168 million people have high blood pressure. Almost the same amount have cardiovascular disease. Prediabetes in America at 46.4% or 156 million people. 45% of our population, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, over 150 million people. 43% of our population is obese. That's 144 million people. 40% of our population has multiple metabolic syndromes, another 100 or 135 million people. 18% of the population is severely obese, over 60 million people. 40 million people in America are diabetic. We have almost 28 million people suffering from anxiety and depression, 8.3% of our population, and 5% or almost 17 million people are living with cancer. Section eight summary. Soil health and food nutrition affect human health. Our unnatural fertilizers and toxic chemicals destroy soil health and soil microbiology. Unnatural foods destroy human health. Glyphosate destroys beneficial microbes in the soil and it also destroys beneficial microorganisms in the human microbiome, our gut. Toxic soils and toxic foods have created over 40 new metabolic diseases that we did not have 100 years ago.